Hi everyone, uh, really excited to have you tune in and watch uh, the Google for Games Summit talks today. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about Game Snacks, which is Google's new HTML5 web gaming platform, uh, and talk to you about all the exciting things that we've seen uh, in the growth of HTML5 web gaming around the world over the last few years, and what we're doing as Google to help developers and users succeed with discovering and playing HTML5 games. A bit about me, my name is Ani. I'm one of the co-founders of the Game Snacks team and the general manager of the team. And I'm really excited to share a little bit more about first, what we've seen over the past few years when it comes to HTML5 gaming all around the world and how it's been growing. Second, uh, an overview of what we're trying to do at Google to help developers and players succeed. And third, what the usage on Game Snacks has looked like today. Now, I want to start just by setting some context, which is that Google, at its core, is a web company. We invest in making the web great across a variety of different experiences and content verticals to help users and developers succeed uh, with easily discovering and sharing great content on this platform. And when people think about web gaming specifically, often, especially in markets like the US and in Europe, when I mention the phrase web gaming, people often think about desktop era web gaming sites from 15 or 20 years ago built on top of Flash. You know, websites that evoke fond memories like addicting games and mini clip and congregate, um, all of which ushered in uh, a great era of web gaming uh, many years ago. As mobile has become the primary way that users interact with content and the web over the last 10 years, many people think that web gaming has been on the decline because Flash, which powered a lot of these great sites, does not render on mobile. But a lot of this has changed over the last three years in particular due to the rise of gaming capabilities that are possible to be delivered and built directly on top of the web platform itself. So this is what we refer to when we talk about modern HTML5 games. It's high quality games that you can build directly using platform capabilities on the web. A lot of this has been enabled by the rise of APIs like WebGL that make it possible for web browsers, including mobile web browsers to tap into the GPU to deliver and render high performance graphics for users, to create games that look like the ones that you see here, uh, that look and feel almost like native games, but are built uh, directly on the web. And what are the benefits of HTML5 games? Why are they great? Well, on the player side, they work well on a variety of different network conditions and device constraints, which is relevant to players around the world especially in emerging markets like India and Indonesia and Nigeria, where many users are coming online to the internet for the first time, often on lower end devices, low memory devices on flaky networks, where they might not have the bandwidth to go and install large games from the App Store and the Play Store. And so the web and HTML5 gaming is a great delivery mechanism for gaming content to them. But they also offer a bunch of great advantages for developers. They offer them flexibility in terms of how they can actually get these games out to their users. The first is that they're cross-platform. HTML5 games work wherever the web works, uh, including on iOS, on Android, on desktop, uh, on TVs, on cars. Uh, and so developers only need to build a game once and it works everywhere. The second is that because it's all ultimately built on top of the web, these games are linkable. They're, each one is associated with a unique URL, which gives developers a variety of different distribution options. They can host the games directly on their site and users can come to their site. They can host it on web portals uh, or they can distribute it inside of other apps that users already use. And that third capability, that ability to distribute it inside of services that users already use, speaks to the embeddability of the web. Uh, developers can build these games in one context and that game can be portably 
uh, embedded inside a variety of different apps and services that users are already using. But we think one of the key challenges that's holding back HTML5 gaming, that's preventing the ecosystem from truly flourishing, is that it's not very clear for a lot of players and users where they should actually go to discover these HTML5 games. What is the go-to destination to find and play high quality HTML5 games? That's exactly the problem that we're trying to solve with GameSnacks. Our mission is to make HTML5 games universally accessible to users all around the world. And so we connect games built by amazing game developers all around the world to apps and services that users are already using day in and day out, many of which are Google apps, some of which are built by our partners to actually get these games out to users. So now what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about both sides of this equation. We'll start by talking a little bit about what the experience for game developers looks like when interacting with GameStacks. Then we'll talk about what it looks like from the integration side, how these games are actually distributed to users and how users find them and discover them. And then we'll talk a little bit about monetization at the end and how we're helping developers succeed with building viable businesses on top of GameStacks. First, Start with the game developer side. So we work with over 30 game developers around the world today to get their games onto GameSnacks. And these games have been adapted for audiences all around the world and a variety of different device constraints and network conditions. The first is that we pay a lot of attention to make sure that these games are actually localized to markets that they're uh, targeted for. For example, a significant part of our user base is in India. And we spend a lot of time and care to make sure that we have a high quality content catalog for Indian audiences. For example, Bali Beat. The second is that we spend a lot of time making sure that these games are fast loading in a variety of network conditions. We work closely with game developers to optimize uh, the initial game bundle to make sure that they're as small as possible and reuse features on the web platform as much as possible rather than adding unnecessary craft. Uh, and we also work with them to be intelligent about how they load assets in the game so that they defer loading of future levels or future images or, or large sound files until users absolutely need to encounter them. And the third is that we've really pushed the envelope on the graphics capabilities of these games and make sure that these games look and feel almost like native game when, when users are playing them so that they can't tell a difference uh, between whether it's a web game or a native game. We now have over 100 games on the platform, and you can check out the full catalog at gamesnacks.com. We've tried to keep the experience as simple as possible for game developers in terms of how they actually work with GameSnacks to get their games onto the platform. They start by adding the GameSnacks SDK, which is a few lines of JavaScript that they include into their games. Then they upload them to our platform, after which we begin a QA process to ensure that the games work well across a bunch of different platforms, iOS, Android, and desktop, and are also bug free. Then once they've passed the QA process, we host them on our platform. And finally, we get them distributed and integrated into a variety of different apps and services without game developers having to do a thing. All they have to do is focus on what they know and love doing best, which is building a high quality game. So now let's talk a little bit about how these integrations work and how we actually get these games out to users. It starts with the Embed API, which is flexible infrastructure that we've built that allows us to very quickly spin up new integrations. The Embed API allows these games built by game developers to be embedded anywhere, iOS, Android, tablets, and desktop. It also enables customization so that the games can be laid out in a way that feels native to the app that they're integrated into. For example, the search and discovery experience can be reskinned to look like uh, the native app UI uh, and can also over time be adapted to include platform features that are natively provided by the app or website that they're integrated into. And third, the Embed API works with a variety of different Google apps and partner apps. So let's talk a little bit about specific examples 
of where the embed API has been integrated today and what it looks like from a user perspective to actually be able to discover these games. One example is with Chrome. So we partnered closely with the Google Chrome team to bring game snacks and web gaming to Chrome users on Android. So today, if you are a user of Chrome on Android in India, Indonesia, Nigeria, or Kenya, straight from the new tab page on Chrome, you can discover a high quality list of web games that are all powered by game snacks. Because many of these users might not know exactly where to go uh, on the web when it comes to finding games to play. And so this we think is a relatively straightforward integration that the Embed API supports, but just shows one example of how users can actually encounter these games directly from the new tab page of a web browser. The second integration I want to talk about is with Google Discover. So Discover is a feed of curated content that's tied and personalized according to a user's interests that's very easily accessible straight from the home screen of a user's Android device. So when they swipe left from the home screen, they'll be able to see this Discover feed of content. And among the various different types of content that's viewable on Discover, one of them is now web games, which we think makes a lot of sense for the Discover context as users are just looking to kill a few minutes here and there in the middle of their day. And so for users who are interested in gaming, who are interested in a particular category of gaming, maybe a user who's interested in puzzle games would want to discover a puzzle game, or a user interested in card games might want to discover Solitaire, or a user interested in arcade games might want to discover Tiger Run, you know, as pictured here. They can very easily find it straight from within the Discover feed and instantly start playing without having to leave the Discover app. So this highlights one of the uh, flexibilities of sort of uh, web gaming in terms of how it can easily be embedded inside of the underlying app without users having to actually leave the app. Third, I want to highlight what our integration with the Assistant looks like. So any user who uses the Assistant on Android around the world can simply say to the Assistant, OK, Google, play a game and you will discover a list of sort of game snacks web games that's accessible straight from the assistant. Again, users can tap in and start playing without actually leaving the assistant, but all fully delivered by the web. So yet another example of what a web powered integration could look like. And finally, I want to highlight what game snacks inside of a partner app might look like. So we've been working with the Gojek team which started off as a ride hailing app in Indonesia, but has since expanded into a variety of different services that they offer to users in Indonesia, like e-commerce, like food delivery, and increasingly entertainment. So we've worked closely with them to add a game center into the Gojek app. And you can see what it looks like here, where users straight from the Gojek app can uh, click into the Go Game section, which is ultimately powered by Game Snacks. And one of the nice things about this is that it's been reskinned to look and feel like the Gojek app. So that from a user perspective, a Gojek user uh, feels right at home uh, when they're playing sort of game snacks games within the app, but all again delivered by the web. And the best part from a game developer perspective is that they didn't need to worry about any of these integrations. They didn't need to worry about what it would look like in Chrome, in Discover, in the Assistant, or in Gojek. They just had to build their game and we took care of the rest in terms of actually getting those games out to users on these different surfaces. We recently announced that across all of these different integrations, millions of people from around the world play GameStax games every month, but we think we're just getting started and are excited to keep enabling and spinning up more and more of these integrations to meet users where they are to help them play. Finally, I wanna talk just a little bit about monetization. We're still in the very early days of this, but it hopefully paints a little bit of a vision of where we can go with monetizing this platform and ultimately helping game developers succeed. So we've been working very closely with the AdSense team at Google to pioneer high quality web gaming ad formats, both for users and for game developers. And what we're doing is working on enabling game formats that are natively integrated inside of the game itself that are less intrusive to users better respect their attention so that the ads are surfaced at the right moment during a game. They don't actually interrupt the gameplay and don't distract from the core gameplay experience and a lot more engaging than what's out there on the web today. So specifically the two formats that we're working on right now that are in beta 
are one interstitial ads, which are full screen immersive video ads that appear after at natural breakpoints in a game. So perhaps when a user has failed a level or after the end of a game session, that's interstitial ads. We've also been working with them debuting rewarded ads, which are opt-in based experiences that users can optionally choose to engage in uh, at certain moments in a game where in exchange for watching a video, they can collect a reward that helps them perform better within the game. And across the native gaming ecosystem, these formats have been there for a while and have been shown to perform a lot better than other types of ad formats. And we're excited to bring them to the web. And we're working on making it very simple to integrate these AdSense ads into GameSnacks games so that using that same GameSnacks SDK that game developers are already using, they can easily enable uh, rewarded ads and interstitial ads uh, as part of the gameplay experience. And this shows here what such an example could look like inside one of our games, Lake Jump on GameSnacks, where users, after they lose a level in Lake Jump, can optionally choose to watch a video through a rewarded ad, and if they do, can get another attempt at playing the game. So we're excited to start testing this with some of our early game development partners over the next couple quarters, and then move forward with monetization more broadly in the later part of this year or early next year. So that's GameSnacks in a nutshell, and a bit about our mission to make HTML5 gaming successful uh, for users all around the world to make it really easy for them to discover these games and to help game developers succeed too, to help them reach more users and players all around the world and ultimately build viable businesses on top of our platform. So you have any questions about anything that I've said, if you have ideas for things that we could be working on that we might not have covered, if you have feedback for things we should be doing, uh, or if you wanna partner with us, either as a game developer to get your game onto our platform and reach more users, or as an app developer that wants to easily add a game section into your app without having to worry about the nuances of the gaming industry, please reach out. My email address is right there uh, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great uh, rest of the summit.